And welcome to the KEXP live room. My name is Troy Nelson, and we at KEXP stream all over the world at kexp.org. Also, we broadcast live in Seattle 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 90.3 FM. And I am very excited to be in the KEXP live room today because not only am I surrounded by more guitar pedals than I've ever seen in my life, but I'm also surrounded by members of Caliphone. And if you are ready, take it away. All right.
check, check, Yo. check. Okay, there's my microphone. Well, first I wanted to say that was awesome. And it's gonna, it feels kind of weird finishing a song with no audience clapping. <laughs> 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 We're used to that. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Right, right. Um, you're listening to Califone live here on KEXP Seattle. in town for a death in the family you never loved you started a story that you could not finish and I waited and I waited While we speak, our ghosts are speaking to each other Between the walls of satellite It's only funny when you're not afraid of everything Cadillac hope, the capitalism and killed by lower gods and eyelash A present joy, a present joy You can give me what's already mine We are the hangman and the undertaker We are the embraces and we are the embrace We are a silent movie, sweetheart With a swollen tongue And I'm waiting And I'm waiting While we speak our self-made matter A wine-stained mask, a reptile, a cigarette Attention slides away It's only funny when you're not afraid of everything Cadillac hope, capitalism killed by an eyelash A present joy, a present joy You can give me what's already mine You can give me what's already mine I was in town for a death in the family You 
never left You started a story that you could not finish And I waited And I waited Lives of saints and invisible men. Devoured. I like an art lost in the promised land. So, like a pocket calculating, trying on some new name someday. Sunday, Sunday, I found my heart, found my heart. 
painting of a photograph of a painting of a digital file. The death row stewardess falling like Rome out of love on a filthy beach. Robbing bodies after the battle, the shadow of a shell of a dog face boy. Wander around the story, waiting to connect, wishing it was fiction, and never coming down. Mother Tiger Wild. Rust on an ancient sound Tape saturation on a digital imitation A temporary bartender Animals and gods Falling like Rome out of hope You know I'm shell-shocked and I never got my shit together Wander around the story When we get where we get, you know, the Halloween Decorations are never coming down Evil, hunger, glory and greed After a sweet sound, holy
That is awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. You're listening to Califone, live here in the KEXP live room. The new album is called Villagers, and all of the music that you heard today is from that record. And once again, thank you all so much for taking the time to do this. Oh, for, thanks for having us. For all the listeners. Uh, I just have a few questions for you. Uh, here we are, a quarter of a century of Califone and still going <laughs> strong and potent as ever. And... Uh, Tim, I wanted to ask you, going way back as a teenager and learning guitar from a Neil Young songbook and a Bob Dylan songbook, and then uh, then to the band Red Red Meat, and then a few decades now of Califone, uh, looking back, what has this journey felt like to you? Uh, sometimes uh, always kind of strange and surprising, <laughs> still to this day. Um, Still learning all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes bad. <laughs> sometimes great. I I'm having more fun now than ever, and these guys are incredible. I love playing with 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 Max mm -hmm. and with Brad and with Joe and with Rachel. I love playing with these people. So yeah. it's, it's it's more fun than ever. It's yeah. continually evolving and just yeah. to, uh, continually being creative with this project. Yeah, and even the songs every night, every time we play them, they're a little bit they can go, they're open-ended, so mm -hmm. they, it feels like it keeps them alive. Yeah, well, you have a wonderful band. Yeah, I beautiful, was, beautiful yeah. people. Love it. And uh, I was just so curious about your history, and, uh, you know, I mentioned the band Red Red Meat, and I was very curious about something. Did you happen to get that band name from working at your friend Benny's family truck stop on the south side of Chicago, washing out meat trucks? Strangely enough, no. <laughs> we had the band name before we worked there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened, but it just sort of <laughs> happened, and it was part of the bad karma of choosing that name that we had to wash out some blood from trucks for a while. What an interesting job. It was interesting, yeah. Yeah, and this, this truck stop, uh, Benny's dad had a room in there that he would do a radio show from? Benny's dad did a radio station. He was like a jazz DJ in Chicago that my folks listened to. So, yeah, he... And he used to put on shows, like he would bring like Count Basie and he would bring jazz players in and do concerts and he was and he had the truck stop. He was a he was a dude. Interesting. Um but yeah, he did a radio show out of that room and when he passed and Benny had the the truck wash, mm -hmm. um, we all worked there. <laughs> we would weigh trucks <laughs> and wash out trucks when they came in and then you know, we had that, that room that he did the radio show and we kinda made it into a music room. So we recorded uh, the last Red Red Meat records and the first Califone records there. Cool. Um, a lot, yeah, we did a lot of recording there, mm -hmm. and uh, we would go work on music, and then a trucker would ring the bell, and then we'd have to go out and take care of the truck. Wow, it's amazing. And also, you worked at a record store, and uh, you were listening to like old Black Flag records and Meat Puppets albums, and uh, you even, you know liked some Grateful Dead. Um, what changed for you when you first heard the third album, Sister Lovers, by Big Star? Oh my God, um, I <laughs> I never really heard that pop music could be that weird. <laughs> you know, something so poppy and uh, like the structure of the pop music that we all love uh, and that melodic and that catchy, but mm -hmm. that down. Because I kind of felt, and I still feel a lot, that down. Mm -hmm. Like that record I could feel still. Yeah. Yeah, timeless. Yeah. Um, also, how important to you was first discovering the Harry Smith Anthology of American Folk Music box set? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's foundational. Um, and I think it's not just me. I think when that came out on CD in the late 90s yeah, or early 2000s. Yeah, that's when I remember it. Yeah, I think everybody got a hold of that, and everybody was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like, it kind of changed everybody's direction into this more, like, old-timey folk. You know, it was a rediscovery of that music for sure. And it was probably like that in the 50s, too, when, when he was first releasing that stuff yeah. and compiling it. Uh, if someone were to say to you, I've never heard the band Can before, where, where should I start? What would you tell them? I would say, we probably all have a different answer. Um, I would say Future Days, the record Future Days. What about you? Yeah, anybody else? What about you? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? No comment. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> what about you? Oh, what's the blue cover one? I'm blanking on the name of it. Uh, the one with the soup can on it? Or the can- it goes, got to tap the tap the tap the The first song is... Got to tap the tap. Is that the one you're... That's the one you're talking about. Eggy Bamiyasi? Yeah. Is that the same one? I think okay, so. yeah, no, not a blue cover then. Eggy Bamiyasi was my first okay. introduction to can, and I was like, I was like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah, that is the soup can, the soup can one. Ta- what is it, Tagomago or Tagomago? Oh or, yeah, there's that one yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can. And it's funny because I, I can hear all these these little the, the sounds of can kind of creep into the sound of Califone. I hear all these elements. I hear that, you know, like we were talking about the anthology of American folk music, and then can. Thank you for saying can and not leftover salmon, <laughs> <laughs> or um, dog water. That. D- I think it's got like Earthship Dog Water is that other jam band. Do you know that one? I used to go on tour and follow them. Dog Water. <laughs> You've collaborated with so many uh, musicians. I, I wanted to list uh, a few names, and I would love to know. Uh, I'm going to mention their name, and I would love uh, for you to tell the listeners uh, who they are, what uh, your relationship is with them, okay. and what first thing that comes to your mind. Um, Nora O'Connor. Um, she's lovely and an incredible singer, and I'm a fan of her music and of her singing in in general. And she came in on this record. Uh, Brian Deck was engineering and producing, and we needed some vocals, and he called in Nora and uh, Macy Stewart, who plays in, she's incredible. And they had never sung together before. And they sang on our record on three songs, and, and they just knocked it right out, and they were perfect right yeah. off the bat. Beautiful. And Nora's incredible. I was going to mention Macy Stewart as well. Yeah, um, she's an incredible all-around musician, and I, I wish I knew them better. Mm-hmm. All I know is they came in and just knocked it out of the park. Awesome. Uh, Michael Krasner? Michael Krasner. That's how I know Max. Um, and uh, Michael is... He was a producer on Villagers, and he's probably had something to do with, like, all the California records since probably 2005 at least. Cool. And um, sometimes I play in his band, and that's called Boxhead Ensemble. Mm-hmm. And we scored some films together, and he's a beautiful human being. And uh, he's uh, – sometimes I trust Michael's ears better than I trust my own. And I wish he was here right now. Mm-hmm. We tried to get him to come up and play mm-hmm. these shows, and he's busy. Yeah. But, yeah, incredible. Wonderful. Uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when I mention Engine Studios? Well, that's uh, Brian's old stu- Now it's called Narwhal. But it's, uh, yeah, it's where we did a lot of Villagers. When we, that's where we finished the record in Chicago. And we worked on Echo Mine, our last record, which was a dance piece, a score for a dance piece. We did almost all of that at, 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 at Narwhal Engine. Mm-hmm. So, it used to be Engine now, yeah. Narwhal. And uh, did you know that Jim Ellison of the band Material Issue was born in Addison, Illinois? And are you a fan of that band? I know that he was born there. I can't say that I'm a fan of Material Issue. <laughs> I, I haven't heard much of them I either, remember. So. I think they're a great pop band. Just uh, I never really dug them. Yeah, I was just looking at the list of notables from Addison, Illinois, and that was the one of the. Uh, I mean, very I can tell few. you a horrible story if you want to know one. I I love this is horrible. <laughs> Wait, how horrible are we talking? Scale one to ten. Eight. The, the answer is I. Then yeah, I'm curious. Yes. Okay. I mean, you can edit this out, right? <laughs> yeah. Which makes it the worst story ever. Jeez. So yeah, you can cut this story out. Uh, well, I didn't know that was going to be the ending. I don't know. That's a horrible story. No, I should never repeat it. No, there's a lot of pee involved and a lot of... Uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. It was like I saw a short film in my mind, so I appreciate that. Thing. I mean, it was really a strange thing that happened. And in Chicago at the time, like all the newspapers wrote about that whole thing. Oh, this, this was news. It was in the news, yeah. And it was local Chicago music news, yeah. They say no press is bad press. Do you believe that statement? <laughs> <Yeah>. I don't. <laughs> I don't. There is a line <laughs> there is a line. No, thank you for sharing. And thanks for sharing your music with all of us uh, for all these years and still making great records. And, oh, thanks. Uh, loving this new album, Villagers, and, uh, and taking the time stopping by, meeting all of you fantastic musicians in this band. 
Well, great to meet you. Yes. Thanks a lot for having us. Yes, absolutely. And once again, that was Caliphone live here on KEXP. You good? All right. Yeah. Yeah, you should probably cut that material. If you <laughs> well, I'll leave it at a stopped it like, uh, yeah, they're great. Discover new music at listenerpowered kexp.org. Okay, so we used to drink a lot back in the old days, and we used to go to this bar and then end up at this late night bar in Chicago that was just mayhem till like, you know, five in the morning. So I was with a guy in my band that in Red Red Meat, and we were just having a good time and uh, drinking. And this guy's a big guy that I played in the band with, big fella, and a big strong guy. So we're at the bar, we're drinking, and Jim Ellison from Material Issue walks up, Addison native, homie of mine, and, hey Jim, just yapping. And uh, f for whatever reason, he was saying things that my friend and my bandmate didn't like. My bandmate urinated on his leg, on Jim's <laughs> leg, just took his penis out and just started peeing. And I was like, man, do not, don't, don't do that. It was, hor it was horrible and frightening. Wow. Because you just don't see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much anymore. Yeah, not, not these not days. Enough. Back in the not old enough. days. Yeah, back in the old days. Back in the 90s, there was all kinds <laughs> of people just <laughs> Whip it out going, and start peeing. whipping it out and going where they felt like it. Exactly. And other people or whatever. But I wonder if that's ever going to come back. I don't, I don't know. It, sing, it swings. The pendulum swings. But, <laughs> but it's like... Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. I thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so that happened. And... Jim was like, of course, livid, and everybody was a little drunk, and Jim wanted to fight. And, you know, my bandmate's a big guy. Yeah. And a nonviolent guy, except for the peeing on people <laughs> part, which is violence, I think. Mm -hmm. So they moved the whole thing outside, and Jim was hitting my friend, and my friend was going, ah, like pretending like he was being hurt. He rolled over a car. He was, he was just acting it up, and it would made Jim even more humiliated. Yeah. So somehow everything sort of faded out, and we were playing a show a few weeks later at the Metro. And we were playing the show. My friend, who, you know, some people in my band were on mushrooms for that show, which is not a great idea sometimes to do mushrooms for a show. So it was weird to begin with. And we were playing the show, and all of a sudden... Uh, Jim and another gigantic sort of bouncer type guy came up and they had these cups, you know, like the red keg uh, cups. Mm -hmm. They had plastic cups <laughs> and they threw them on us. Oh, God. And it was their pee. <laughs> 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 so then we got through the show and we were leaving on tour the next day and our, our stuff smelled like pee. We couldn't get around the pee smell. But you know, afterwards, I was like, let's just get this done. So I put everybody in a room, and I tried to mediate between my bandmate and Jim and his bouncer guy. And my friend was tripping, and it just didn't work out. And that was maybe the last time I spoke with Jim before his suicide, <laughs> oh. which makes it the worst story ever. Jeez. So, yeah, you can cut this story out. <laughs> <laughs>